And welcome back to Van's reading. We're on chapter 16, Causes Trump's Statistics. We know the book. We know what it is. If you don't know what the book is, go watch the other videos and help me. <laughs> All right. So chapter 16, uh, Causes Trump, uh, Causes Trump Statistics. Consider the following scenario and note your intuitive answer to the question. A cab was involved in a hit and run accident at night. Two cab companies, the green and the blue, operate in the city. You're given the following data. 85% of the cabs in the city are green and 15% are blue. A witness identified the cab as blue. The court tested the reliability of the witness under the circumstances that existed on the night of the accident and concluded that the witness correctly identified each one of the two colors 80% of the time and failed 20% of the time. What is the probability that the cab involved in the accident was blue rather than green? This is a standard problem of Bayesian in inference. There are two items of information, a base rate and the imperfect, imperfectly reliable testimony of a witness. In the absence of a witness, the probability of the guilty cab being blue is 50%, 15%, which is the base rate of, the out of that outcome. If the two cab companies had been equally large the base rate would be uninformative un that bad there we go uninformative and you would consider only the reliability of the witness concluding that the probability is 80 percent the two sources of information can be combined by bayes rule the correct answer is 41 percent however you can probably guess what people do when faced with this problem they ignore the base rate and go with the witness the most common answer is 80 percent Causal stereotypes. Now consider a variation of the same story in which only the presentation of the base rate has been altered. You're given the following data. The two companies operate the same number of cabs, but green cabs are involved in 85% 85% of incidents. Oh, accidents. The information about the witness is as in the previous version. The two versions of the problem are mathematically indistinguishable, but they are psychologically quite different. People who read the first version do not know how to use the base rate and often ignore it. In contrast, people who see the second version give considerable weight to the base rate and their average judgment is not too far from the Bayesian solution. Why? In the first version, the base rate of blue cabs is, statistical fact, is a statistical fact about the cabs in the city. A mind that is hungry for causal stories find nothing to chew on. How does the number of green and blue cabs in the city cause this cab driver to hit and run? In the second version, in contrast, the drivers of green cabs cause more than five times as many accidents as the blue cabs do. The conclusion is immediate. The green drivers must be a collection of reckless madmen. You have now formed a stereotype of green recklessness, which you apply to unknown uh, which you apply to an unknown individual driver in the company. The stereotype is easily fitted into a causal story because recklessness is a causally relevant fact about individual cab drivers. In this version, there are two causal stories that need to be combined to be combined or reconciled. The first is the hit and run, which naturally evokes the idea that a reckless green driver was responsible. The second is the witness testimony which strongly suggests the cab was blue the inference from the two stories about the color of the car are contradictory and approximately can approximately cancel each other the chances for the two colors are about equal the bayesian estimate is 41 percent re reflecting the the fact that the base rate of the green cabs is a little more extreme than the reliability the real oh God, the reliability of the witness who reported as a blue cab uh, the cab example illustrates the two types of base rates. Statistical base rates are facts about a population to which a case belongs, but they're not relevant to the individual case. Causal base rates change your view of how that individual case came to be. The two types of base rate information are treated differently. Statistical base rates are generally underweighted and sometimes neglected, neglected altogether when specific information about the case at hand is available. Causal base rates are treated as information about the individual case and are easily combined with other case-specific information. The causal version of the cab problem 
had the form of a stereotype. Green drivers are dangerous. Stereotypes are statements about the group that are at least tentatively accepted as facts about every member. Here are two examples. Most of the gradu graduates, most of the graduates of this inner city school go to college. Interest in cycling is widespread in France. <clears throat> These statements are readily interpreted as setting up a propensity in individual members of the group and they fit in a causal story. Many graduates of this particular inner city school are eager and able to go to college presu presumably because of some beneficial futures of life in that school. There are forces in French culture and social life that cause many Frenchmen to take an interest in cycling. You will be reminded of these facts when you think about the likelihood that a particular graduate of the school will attend college or when you wonder whether to bring up the Tour de France in a conversation with a Frenchman you just met. Stereotyping is a bad word in our culture, but in my usage, it is neutral. One of the basic characteristics of System 1 is that it represents categories as norms and pro, pro, oh, pro oh, this is another word. Uh, it represents categories as norms and prototypical examples this is how we think of horses, refrigerators and New York police officers. We hold, in, we hold in memory of representation of one or more normal members of each of these categories. When the categories are social, these representations are called stereotypes. Some stereotypes are perniciously wrong and hostile stereotyping can be dreadful consequences. Hashtag Kanye. But the psychological facts cannot be avoided. Stereotypes, both correct and false, are how we think of categories. You may not, not you may note the irony. In the context of the cab problem, the neglect, the neglect of the base rate information is cognitive flaw, a failure of Bayesian reasoning, and the reliance on a causal base rate rates is desirable. Stereotyping the green drivers improves the accuracy of judgment. In other contexts, however, such as hiring or profiling, there is a strong social norm against stereotyping, which is also embedded in the law. This is as it should be. In sensitive social contexts, we do not want to draw possibly erroneous conclusions about the individual from the, statistic, the statistics of the group. We consider it morally desirable for base rates to be treated as statistical facts about the group rather than as presumptive facts about individuals. In other words, we reject causal base rates. The social norm against stereotyping include the opposition to profiling has been highly beneficial in creating a more civilized and more equal society. It is useful to remember, however, that neglecting valid stereotypes inevitably inevitability inevitably inevitably uh, results in suboptimal judgments resistance to stereotyping is a laudable moral position but the simplistic idea that resistance is costless is wrong the costs are worth paying to achieve a better society but denying that the cost exists while satisfying to the soul and politically correct it is it is not scientifically defensible reliance on the effect heuristic is common in politically charged arguments, the positions we favor have no cost and those we oppose have no benefits. We should be able to do better. Causal situations. Amos and I constructed the variance of the cab problem, but we did not invent the powerful notion of causal base rates. Uh, we, borrowed, we borrowed it from psycholo psychologist Itzik Eitzin, I think it's Itzik Eitzin or Eitzin, in his experiment, Eitzen showed his participants brief, asked the participants to judge the probability that each student had passed the test. The manipulation of causal base rates was straightforward. Eitzen told one group that the students they saw had been drawn from a class in which 75% passed the exam and told another group that the same students had been in a class which only 25% passed. This is a powerful manipulation because the base rate of passing suggests the immediate inter in the immediate inference the that the test that oh my god <sighs> okay uh this is a powerful ma manipulation because the base rate of of passing suggests the immediate inference that the test that only 25 percent passed must have been brutally difficult 
The difficulty of a test is, of course, one of the causal factors that determine every student's outcome. As expected, I sense, I don't know, I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name here, bro. As expected, I, 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 I send, I gens, I gens, I gens, I gens. I'm going to say I gens. Let's call them I gens. I gens. I gens. Maybe it's I gens. It's Arabic. So I gens. Subjects were highly sensitive to the causal base rates and every student was judged more likely to pass in the high success condition than in the high failure rate. So they said that as expected, IGN subjects were highly sensitive to the causal base rates and every student was judged more likely to pass in the high success condition than in the high failure rate. Okay, so you're more likely to pass in a place where there's high pass rates rather than in a low failure rate, which is interesting. Uh, Aijin used an ingenious method to suggest a non-causal base rate. He told his subjects that the students they saw had been drawn from a sample, which itself was constructed by selecting students who had passed or failed the exam. For example, the information for the high failure group read as follows. The investigator was mainly interested in the causes of failure and constructed a sample in which 75% had failed the ex examination. Note the difference. The base rate is purely statistical fact about ensemble from which cases have been drawn. It has no bearing on the question asked, which is whether the individual student passed or failed the test. As expected, the explicitly uh, stated base rates had some effects on judgment, but they had much less impact than the statistically equivalent causal base rates. System 1 can deal with the stories in which the elements are causally linked, but it is weak in statistical reasoning. For Bayesian thinker, of, for Bayesian thinker, of course, the version are equivalent. It is attempting to conclude that we have reached the satisfactory conclusion. Causal base rates are used merely statistical facts are more or less neglected. The next study, one of my all time favorite shows that the situation is rather more complex. Uh, I wanna see what the word Bayesian Bayanjan, Bayajan, 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 let me see, Bayajan, pronunciation, let me see, give me a second. Bayesian priors. Bayesian. I fucking model. said it right. <laughs> Can psychology be taught? The reckless cab drivers and the impossible, the impossible, blah, 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 I should be on a freaking despicable me movie <clears throat> after reading this book. Uh, Can psychology be taught? The reckless cab drivers and the impossible possibly difficult exam illustrate two in inferences that people can draw from causal base rates, a, a stereotypical trait that is attributed to an individual and a significant feature of the situation that affects an individual's outcome. The participants in the experiments made the correct inferences and their judgments improved. Unfortunately, things do not always work out well. The classic experiment I described next shows the people that People will not draw from base rate information and inference that conflicts with other beliefs. It also supports the uncomfortable conclusion that teaching psychology is mostly a waste of time. <gasps> oh, oh, that's terrible. It probably is. The experiment was conducted a long time ago by the social psychologist Richard Nisbet and a student, Eugene Bor Borgida, at the University of Michigan. They told students about the renowned helping experiment that had been conducted a few years earlier in the New York University, particularly, sorry, what does it say? Particular, what? Par participants, there we go. I was gonna say partic pants because the two words are there. Part participants in that experiment were led to individual booths and invited to speak over the intercom about their personal lives and problems. They were to talk in turn for about two minutes. Only one microphone was active at any time. 
at any one time. There were six participants in each group, one of whom was Stooge. The Stooge spoke first following a script prepared by the experimenters. He described his problems adjusting to New York and admitted with obvious embarrassment that he was prone to seizures, especially when stressed. All the participants then had a turn. When the microphone was again turned over the Stooge, he became agi agitated and incoherent, said he felt the seizure coming on, and asked for someone to help him. The last words heard from him were, see, 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 see somebody, uh, 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 how, 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 help, I'm gonna, that, 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 I'm gonna, that, 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 that